I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup Strengths Explorer Series recorded on March 7th, 2019. Strengths Explorer is a podcast series that dives deep into the 10 talent themes of the Clifton Youth Strengths Explorer, designed for adults who are interested in accepting, confirming, and growing the individual potential of a child. This series expands on your language to describe what is right and strong with children ages 10 to 14, and I can sneak out on either side of that. To further your understanding, check out Gallup's book, Strengths-Based Parenting, available wherever books are available, or you can find it, always find it on our store, shop gallop.com. Today's theme is dependability. Don't forget, you can visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallopstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources need. The books are there as well. You can also catch the video on both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening. We call that podcasting. All the cool kids are doing it. If you haven't discovered podcasting as a way to recapture that time in the car, in a train, in a plane, Micah, that gets quoted all the time for me. Now, we would love to have you do that. And uh, it, all the links to get it done are at coaching.gallop.com. Actually, the easiest way, iPhone and Android both have their own podcasting platform. Just search Gallup Webcasts, and you'll see everything that we do out there. Micah Lybrand is our host today. She's a workplace consultant here at Gallup. Micah, always great to see you, and welcome back to the Strengths Explorer series. Thanks, Jim, and thanks for being here an hour early today. <laughs> You bet. We are excited about dependability, and uh, it's been fun. Micah, I'm, I'm not going to lie, and I don't know why I would, but um, it's been fun to get feedback on this as the listeners have been going through. We've been a little slow on the podcast side of getting these out. Uh, I've got a couple more coming out this week, but it's been fun to get the feedback as we have people really kind of walk through each one of these and see really the value as we think about it in, in children's lives. And so um, we've been getting some feedback through the Facebook group. I've been taking some phone calls where some of you have been using this. And so we're just excited for some of you, you've discovered this for the very first time. And so if you're if you're new to Strengths Explore, settle in. You don't have to know it all today, but we got some yeah. great resources for you. As we think about dependability, what do we think about, Micah? So dependability is uh, describes those kids who, when they make a promise, they keep it. Uh, trust is very important to them. Uh, they care about being seen as trustworthy, being seen as responsible. And others, kids, adults, other people in their orbit probably count on them to do what they say they will do. Um, within dependability, I think there's those this profound sense of duty. Um, there's a lot of honor wrapped up in dependability. It's about owning what you say you will do and also wanting to do it in a way that honors the people who are asking it or the person who asked you to do that. So in for, for some kids, dependability might describe the task itself and the execution of that promise, but it also might describe the manner in which they do things. Now, lots of kids love having jobs, but those with dependability really love the reflection of themselves in the result of doing that job. In the book, Strength Based Parenting, which we've been talking about through most of the season, we're going to continue to talk about, we talk about strength spotting. And so mm -hmm. as we think about dependability and this idea of strength spotting, can you, can you give us some clues? Sure. So I'll give us basically a list of, of things that we might be able to spot. And essentially, this is described in the book as well as how do you start from day zero looking for strength? So maybe even before they're in that 10 to 14 age range, what can you look for? That might be a clue to dependability. Sometimes I, I find that adults describe kids with dependability as being an old soul, um, mature, seeming like they are acting older than their age. And, you know, that could be for a lot of reasons. Um, with my son, I'm pretty sure it's because of his sense of humor and his communication. But uh, when it's with dependability, that might be something that comes up quite a bit um, because we we think about really summarizing that awareness of jobs that need to be done, uh, potential contributions that they can make to the whole, and that desire to jump in and own those things. Now, it's different than the caring theme that we discussed a few weeks back, where we really looked at the desire to be the help and to serve. A dependability is to execute on what you have said you will do. Um, so you might look for kids who seek the approval of adults or who seek that sort of acknowledgement that they are doing the job that they've been asked to do. They love being trusted to do things independently and to own things. Um, they are probably the sort of kid who gets that permission and then runs with it rather than waiting for instructions, waiting for you to hold their hand or, or waiting even for permission to execute on something. They will notice when promises are broken 
Um, and after they finish a job or an activity, they might be eager not just to celebrate that, but, but to look for how could I have another job. You also might notice some frustration when they don't feel like they've got a place or, or something that they can work toward, something that they can own. My oldest, Chris asked in the chat room, anyone here with a child with dependability, my my oldest sh uh, showed this tendency, turned out being kind of a, some some responsibility themes that came out as, as an adult. But Micah, all those things where we could um, we could say to him to do something and he would do it every time. And I wish mm. all my other children were that way in a lot of ways. That would have made parenting a whole a whole lot easier. <laughs> we we also were able to leave him home earlier and give him those responsibilities that that we kind of knew he would do and, and and he still had to do it like it just didn't mean it was an automatic slam dunk but we mm -hmm. did give him some great opportunities to get that done and he is kind of an old soul which is kind of interesting he he is a um, sometimes his brothers have called him the old man you know they're <laughs> like come on old man. Uh, do some things different. So as we think about, we related to him in a way of giving him more opportunities for that to shine. How else can adults relate uh, to this talent thing? So I think it's important for us as adults to take into account how we offer up what we expect, what might sound to a kid like a promise. Um, kids with dependability take that execution on a promise very seriously. So they are probably going to expect the same from you. Uh, as you're listening to this definition, you might hear, especially if you're well-versed in, in Clifton Strengths, you might hear quite a bit of responsibility. And I, I don't want to shy you away from that. What I, what I want to make sure we don't do is that we paint all of our worries, our judgments, our fears about the theme of responsibility onto kids with dependability, because it's not a one-for-one. One. There are some elements of the relational aspect of this theme, really wanting to do something because someone outside of you asked. And I think that that definitely matches responsibility in, in Clifton Strengths. But there's also some executing themes that you can see within here. Um, a great care in how things are done, how they align with expectations. Um, you could maybe possibly even be known for doing great work. And that is part of what dependability also carries with it, that awareness that others are seeing you and, and you want to be seen as an oath keeper, right? As, as somebody who, who stays true to their word or who carries out a specific duty that they become known for. Now, my toddler, um, think about strength spotting. I'm not sure that she's got dependability, but here might be something that it looks like she loves and truly delights in making sure that everybody's shoes are put away in the specific place that we put shoes in our house. And she's the first to go there every morning, drag out all the shoes and bring them to us. She doesn't care that they're in a straight line. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't care really which shoes they are, but she loves that interaction of being able to bring somebody there their shoe in the morning. It has sort of become her thing. And I think about this, you'll notice uh, in the book, it's chock full of experiences and little vignettes of what this looks like in kids. But you might also think about what, what do you notice? What do kids do that they start to really take delight in owning? Yeah. You know, as you were talking about that, one of the things I always, you know, in strength spotting, when situations are good, it's super easy to do this. But oftentimes we see the real talents in there when the stress is on. And and stress has a way of kind of filtering things through. You know, I always think as a kid, for me, I always wanted this kind of theme. I don't have it. And under stress, I, I'm I'm not these things. I I I say things and I don't do them. I don't deliver on what I promise. I don't write under stress. Under per perfect situations, I do. And so that may be also as your strength spotting, you may want to watch those moments when stress is involved uh, and, and it's harder than just doing. It's kind of easy. Yeah, anything's easy when it's easy. But when it gets hard, what kind of things happen? Does, do the shoes get stacked that way? For me, I'd love to do that once. And then, you know, when things are bad, I would I would not get back to it, right? Um, yeah. Moments of stress, I think, are great clues to where we go to most naturally. So for kids with dependability, even when they're stressful, they might even find energy in going back to what, what are my rules? What, what, what can I expect? What is my job within this bigger ecosystem here? Yeah. No, it's as a way of bringing out, of flushing that out. It's, Micah, we have some words. This is quickly becoming my favorite part of the program uh, th through this, this season is these, you know, the, the kids hear everything right? They, they, mm -hmm. everything we say, 
just in the pre-show, you and I were talking and they just, they catch everything, right? Um, what are some words we can use to really kind of land this as we think about praising them? Well, if you're trying to read in between the lines right now, I'll just say you can use better words than I used in my own life last week. I had a, a margarita moment um, with my kiddos. So better words, some or, or I think accurate and, and additional words maybe is better than better uh, that you can use to describe and accept dependability in a child. Um, you might call them mature, um, owner, responsive, loyal, driven, reliable, committed, intent or intentional, um, and a promise keeper. Yeah. I love that word reliable. I, I think that just, that, that settles in at least for ours. That was one mm -hmm. of those very reliable. And, and to say those words out loud, I think are, are really key. What, what as adults, what should we do with this information? What kind of things, if, if we know it, if we're sensing it, what can we do with it? No matter what the theme is, when we're investing in children, I think it means paying attention to their attention. Um, notice what they're looking for and, and look for what they're noticing. Those are consistent, constant clues that they are sending out signals into, into our space to say, this is what I'm drawn to. Help me understand it. Um, you can do this specifically with dependability by exploring what kinds of tasks are taking up the most space in their minds. So here's a list of questions maybe that you want to be ready with that are just slightly better than how was your day? What are you working on today? Who are you keeping a promise to? What is your job at school? Um, what did people count on you for today? What job are you excited about doing? What would you like to be in charge of? That could be a, a someday sort of, imagine maybe that they've got future thinker right there. It could be when you grow up or um, that could even just be this week. What would you like to be in charge of? Um, what do we need to finish and who is counting on us? Um, calling your five-year-old an old man or an old woman may, may sound nice, but that may not be as affirming as what we're looking for. You, <laughs> only saying that because we just we both said that just a few minutes ago. Old soul, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the kids are like, I'm, I'm, am I old? So maybe there's some more good affirming ways as we think about doing this. How can we affirm uh, children with dependability? I recognize what has become a routine. So there might be something already that has become so owned by them that it almost seems expected and unwritten that this is their duty. Praise that uh, duty that they've taken and the transformation that it has created. Affirm their effort. Thank them for their hard work. They are aware that they're doing it and they're proud of it. So tap into that pride and share that with them. I also think about granting them choices of ways that they can contribute. Um, Kids with dependability might notice more opportunities than even adults with or without dependability can see. So I think one little nudge that I could offer there is don't be too quick to assign them rules and expectations. Let them choose, let them offer, let them say, here's a space that I think I could be really great at that would help us. I also think it's important to demonstrate the joy that comes from doing work. Um, share responsibilities that you enjoy with them. We were we were not built to just sort of slog through something, pay our bills and die and repeat. We we are creatures who are here to work and and there's joy in that and there's there's happiness and there's hope in that. So I think part of that is sharing what you experience as as joyful when you work hard. Uh, but it's also opening up some of those opportunities that you could work alongside each other and experience that um that residual effect of doing something well, doing something difficult. Um, and also look for notice times that others are sharing themselves with these kids. So don't forget that this isn't just an executing sort of category. There's this intense, I think, integrity wrapped up in the dependability theme. And that is because you say you do what you say you will do. Other people try very quickly will notice that you're trustworthy, that you are reliable, and there's an emotional component to that. So when you notice other people sharing ideas or feelings or experiences with your kid, give them a pat on the back for that as well. We all need more people in our life who can be trustworthy and be open. So tell them that you notice it and celebrate it. Micah, there's a good, um, it's just a good reminder on celebrating this and recognition and mm -hmm. having a system as an adult, I think having a system ready to go to recognize it, don't, don't make it a go-to thing. You've got to figure out every time, kind of work on those systems that honor 
and and do that and then i think celebrate it and mm -hmm. you know however you decide to do that for my youngest daughter we would always celebrate with dairy queen right and she just loved going down there and that was a big that was a big deal and reinforcing some of those positive and not for the action themselves but how great it is that they're built that way like we spent a lot of time with our kids just talking about who they were not necessarily always what they did. It wasn't always performance-based, but it was always kind of based on this is who you are as a human. And we just want to celebrate that goodness that's in there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that celebration stuff is important. We have the Go Do It Challenge. We've been listening to these. By the way, most of the notes, the questions, the things Mike is talking about, the bullet points here, the, we make these available as we produce these in their edited version on coaching.gallup.com. So you want to head out there. Um, in the show notes for the recorded version, all this information is out. Doesn't mean you shouldn't take notes, but it's out there as well. We call this the Go Do It Challenge. Micah, what do you have for us this week? So this is what we can do to invest in our dependability children this week. Two ideas. One we're calling Routine Redesign. I'd like you as an adult to pick a daily routine that you normally own. Um, and then invite your kid to own part of it or maybe even to redesign and own all of it. You get bonus points that mean nothing, but everybody likes some points. You get bonus points if the task that you're thinking about right now isn't just a straight up chore. <laughs> so here's some ideas. Maybe it's making sure we have everything we need before we leave the house um, or the, the task that I like to call getting out the door. Maybe it's cleaning off the table, telling a bedtime story, caring for a pet, leading the dinnertime debrief of, of everybody's day. Anything you can think of that you realize you normally take ownership for, I want you to share either a piece of it or the entire strategy and let your kid own it. You might even just say, we're going to try this for a week. But I think it's important, especially if you've got a dependability kiddo, that you give them some choice on what is it that you'd like to own or how long would you like to own it? The second one, Jim, we must have been right right along here by talking about the importance of celebration because the second one is rich in recognition. And the reason I wrote it this way is I think that helping children notice these kinds of talents outside themselves gives them a great mirror image to reflect what's so valuable about this and ideally gives them maybe something to look forward to or to look up to. So challenge number two is called celebrate the doers. Identify people in your family or in your community who do specific jobs. Don't get into the trap of just thinking about like the cast of the village people here. You know, we, yes, we think about, um, you know, firemen and policemen and et cetera, construction workers, right? Really think about the people who you already interact with or who your kid is exposed to all day long and talk about the jobs that those people execute. Um, together with your kid, I'd like you to do something to recognize one of those people who does their job well. And don't just talk about it as their identity or their career. This is a policeman. This is a fireman. This is a teacher. Think about here's the job that my teacher does, or here's the job that the janitor in my school does. Here's what the nurse does. And being able to help that child couple commitment with execution and then give that person some recognition. Do that with them. Um, your, your two guidelines for recognition is that there's, it's specific and it's individualized. So along specific, talk about what is it that person really does. And you might ask them in ways that help the kid unlock an answer like, what do you think wouldn't happen if they didn't show up? Or what uh, difference do they make? What promise do they keep? Second on being individualized, think about how that person might like to be recognized. Uh, do they have a favorite color, a favorite character, a favorite candy? Uh, and help your kid experience the, the brilliant opportunities that exist when we get really good at recognition. Yeah, it, is, it, it is indeed. And I think recognition is the key it's the jet fuel to relationships and it, it's amazing what starts starts happening with students teens and adults when a recognition when a positive recognition cycle begins uh, it's hard to get it stopped and it's so powerful in the post show uh, mike and i got a little special recognition and in the post show which you only get on the live show we're going to talk a little bit about it um, and the importance of it. I think maybe uh, a clinic, so to speak, on recognition. But Micah, as we think about dependability, any other final thoughts? Uh, it's just such a cool theme. And I think that together being being kind of 
like shoulder to shoulder with your kid and exploring their world through their lens, um, especially with dependability, is such a fantastic opportunity to recognize the work that they do and the the loops that they close, the duties that they own, the promises that they keep. Um, in all, let's just remember the goal of our podcast here is to simply improve the conversations we have with children um, to help adults accept, affirm, and grow the natural talents within kids. There is no one right way to to parent. There's no one wrong way to parent, but you're, all of your clues that you can figure out for how to do it with the most ease and excellence and promise are within that child. Special thanks to Dr. Mary Reckemeyer and Jerlene Mosley for helping getting us to where we are today. I was on a call um, yesterday. We were talking a little bit about these resources, sometimes outside the United States, a little bit difficult to gain these resources. Don't forget, oftentimes we fulfill a lot of these resources through Amazon. And so if you have an Amazon marketplace where you live, and that's not everywhere, and it's like shipping product around the world is an incredibly difficult difficult thing to do. Storing it, stocking it, keeping it available. We try to do things electronically. Of course, these Strength Explorer resources were built years ago. And, uh, and sometimes they're hard to get your hands on, but it was one of those situations or yesterday where we were in the UK, we have Amazon fulfillment uh, going on in the UK. So don't forget if you, if you check sh uh, shop.gallup.com and the shipping is expensive and you have Amazon in your marketplace where you do, if you can buy through Amazon, give that a look, um, as well. Pricing varies. Amazon sets their own pricing, but, uh, always appreciate you guys in doing what you're doing to get uh, those resources out. Strengthsexplorer.com uh, also has downloadable PDFs that are available for you. Those are free. You can download those and use those. We encourage you to do it. There's a parent guide. There's an educator's guide. There's a sample report. There's some great stuff out there. So make sure oftentimes uh, I get uh, questions about resources and I'm like, actually, there's tons of resources available on the site. We write those on purpose so that you can use them. So don't forget to do that. We'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center as well. It's the GallupStrengthCenter.com. You can send us your questions or comments. We haven't heard from anybody yet, but if you'd like to blog about this, if you've got some experiences or some things you'd like to share uh, around these topics, you can send us an email. Uh, send it to coaching at gallup.com. Put guest blogger in the subject line. That way we'll route it over to Micah and she'll review it. Love to see a few of those come in here in the next few weeks. You can catch the audio, the recorded audio and video of this program, as well as all the past ones on our coaches blog. Uh, it's all out there, coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, you can see a list of all of our courses that lead to certification. And in 2019 and 2020, we have a whole bunch of new courses coming uh, available for you. Some have certifications. Actually, most of these don't. They're just courses you can take. And uh, we've got some online courses coming. We've got some stuff for you. So you'll want to stay close to all the things that we're doing. Uh, you can find a list of all of those courses.gallup.com. We also have a discount on those courses available at the Clifton Strength Summit. So if you haven't signed up for the summit yet, it's getting pretty close to the price going up. We're a week away from that. So here it's uh, the 7th of March of 2019. Uh, you can get all the information about the summit. The summit speakers have been announced. Everything is out there. Everything you need. CliftonStrengthSummit.com. We'd love to see you. Micah, uh, super excited because we get a little opportunity to do our own thing. You, you want to talk about that real quick? I am in constant uh, awe that they just let us get away with doing our own thing, Jim. Uh, if you're coming to the summit, and this might be a reason you want to come to the summit, to see Jim do his own thing live, and I get to tap dance right next to him, we are going to do a call to coach at the close of the summit. So um, one of the, I would say, the resounding reaction that I've had from the last few summits from people has just been, it was so good and I don't know how to distill it. Like there's this, this almost frightening sense of fear, <laughs> frightening sense of fear, overwhelm, I would say is probably what it is um, at the end of, gosh, what do I do with this now? So we're going to help you walk through that. We're going to start you before you even get on a plane and fly back uh, or get in a car and drive back or hitchhike or Uber back. We're going to start you on the path of saying, okay, let's just review what were some of these headlines? <laughs> what, what did we learn? Uh, what do we need to think a little bit more about? Um, now, our room caps out at 500. If you want to see Jim live, which you do, he actually, this is this is a secret, he has a lower half to his body. Like you, can, he exists more than just this upper third and this, you know, smooth, sultry voice that you get exposed to on the podcast world. You should show up. Come hang with us. Yeah, you get signed up in the app. And like I said, that room will be capped at 500 and the, there'll be fire. The fire chief will be out there to make sure there's no more than 500. Will there, there be fire? Can we have pyrotechnics? Can we? I don't think um, that, but stickers cool may appear. Thing. 
stickers may appear again this year. You're going to get us in trouble again. I know. I'm just going to commit to it so they can't say no. So come out and join us, CliftonStrengthSummit.com. Love to have you uh, out there as well. Join us in our Facebook group. Stay up to date on everything that's going on. Facebook.com slash group slash call the coach. Hey, don't join and they never say anything, by the way. We have 13,000 people in that group. Many of you join. I never hear from you again. So jump in there. Jump in the conversation. Love to hear from you. Again, Facebook.com slash groups slash call the coach. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, stay around. If you're listening live, there will be some post show today. And so stay around. for. You can't get the post show unless you come out for the live show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.